Our next speaker is Dr. Laura Coates. Uh, Laura is the, uh, a visiting assistant professor at University of Rochester Medical Center, but she's also the NIHR clinical lecturer at the University of Leeds. Here we go. Um, she's uh, received her medical degree at the uh, Liverpool Medical School, University of Liverpool. She received a PhD at the University of Leeds. Uh, she's been a research fellow at the University of Leeds. Uh, she won a Young Investigator Award from the British Society of Rheumatology. And she's going to speak this morning on treating to target in psoriatic arthritis. So thank you very much for inviting me to speak. I'm an NIHR clinical lecturer from the University of Leeds, and unlike Ian, who's clever and can work with mice and people, I can only do one um, population at a time, so I just stick with the people. Um, it avoids the mouse model problem and what you call them. My patients definitely have arthritis because they're real patients in front of me. And I am what our boss, our head of unit, um, commonly calls an expensive test tube breaker. Um, I'm not allowed in the lab. I'm allowed to see patients because I'm qualified to do that, and generally I'm locked out of the lab. I can deliver blood samples, and that's about it. So I thought I'd start by persuading you that psoriatic arthritis is important. Um, everybody always has rheumatoid as the headline thing because that's what we see the most of. But we know that psoriatic arthritis has a significant impact on people's lives. So this is data from a long time ago, but really showing that the impact on patients is the same whether they have PSA or rheumatoid. So the rheumatoid patients have more... Oh. Somewhere there's a laser. So the rheumatoid arthritis patients have more joint destruction at the side, but other than that, the impact on their life is pretty similar, the impact on function, quality of life, and their overall disease burden. And the other thing that's important in psoriatic arthritis is that we're starting to understand a bit about what has an impact on these patients' lives and what things impact their outcome in the long term. And we need to change that. We need to get rid of that functional disability that the patients suffer with. So this is looking at predictors of outcome in the Bath cohort. They have a large PSA cohort, and they looked at HAC at 10 years down the line, so a long outcome. And they showed at, even at 10 years down the line on all sorts of mixed therapies, that you can pick out certain things that predict people's outcome. And some of the th these things we can persuade people to change, some of these things we can't change. But this has got to be one of the keys, that if people have symptoms for more than 12 months before they're diagnosed, then they have a much worse outcome 10 years down the line. These patients have had good treatment in a specialist center, and you still see that difference. And this is a study really arguing the same thing. This is data from Ireland, um, from Oliver Fitzgerald's group, looking at a delay in diagnosis of more than six months. So this is even shorter time period. And look what impact that has on the patients. They're showing more erosive disease, more deformation of their joints, high, much higher risk of arthritis mutilans, of disability, of sacroiliitis, and a much lower chance of achieving a drug-free remission. So that early window can potentially make a big difference if we get in and treat people effectively. And these are the time-varying predictors of outcome. This is going on once they've arrived in our clinic and we're treating them. We know that increasing damage is seen with inflamed joints um, and with existing damage. That's not surprising if you have bad disease and you've already got damage, you're at an increased risk of further damage. And if we can drop their inflammation markers, then maybe we see a decreased damage. And then this is looking at current treatment of psoriasis and PSA. Um, this is from a large international study. It was thousands and thousands of patients with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, telephone interviews, asking them what treatment they were on. This is the MAP study. And they looked at um, treatment for different severities of psoriasis, depending on how many palms of psoriasis area you had. And then they looked at patients with psoriatic arthritis. This is a self-report. It's not perfect, but it's thousands of patients. And what you can see here is there's a massive proportion of patients who are on no treatment at all. And then beyond that, there's an even bigger proportion who are on topical therapy for their psoriatic arthritis. Now, I know we're moving forward. I know we're developing new drugs. I have yet to see a topical.